There are a wide variety of plant species all over the earth. Sure, some have beautiful flowers or produce delicious foods, but then there are the ones that are a bit more sinister in nature. While we think nothing of eating plants, there are actually plants out there that eat living things. And we're not talking about Audrey 2 here, but in this video, we'll show you 10 plants that eat animals. Know that big red button isn't a decoy being used by a clever carnivorous plant. It's the subscribe button. Press it to make sure you get all the latest videos from the hub. Mouse Eater There are many different varieties of pitcher plants that have evolved to feed on animals. Plants require nitrogen in order to make protein, so when they end up in soil that's lacking it, they need to get their nitrogen from another source. Something like a cute fuzzy mouse, for instance. Take the newly discovered Nepenthes attenboroi, found on the face of Mount Victoria in the Philippines. This plant is named after naturalist David Attenborough, who is known for being rather enthusiastic about the genus. This carnivorous pitcher plant is seriously enormous, with the leaves of their rosette that are nearly a foot in length and four inches wide. Their bell-shaped bodies can grow up to a foot long and contain two liters of liquid. The liquid inside of them tastes and smells rather sweet, making it attractive to small rodents. When the rodents try to take a sip, they end up slipping into the waxy interior of the plant and getting stuck in the sickly sweet sap. The slippery rim of the plant is known as the peristome, and it gets even more slick if rain or dew accumulate on it. Once its prey is trapped, acid-like digestive enzymes help break down the body. Sundew The Drosera is better known as the sundew, and these carnivorous plants take their time consuming their prey. They earn their moniker because of the way their leaf hairs glisten like dew when sunlight hits them. These plants are found in bogs, sandy banks, and other areas with nitrogen deficient soil. Those hairs are actually stalked glands that produce the digestive juices the plant uses to consume its prey. This digestive enzyme includes protease and phosphatase, and the plant rapidly produces more of them the instant it catches prey. There are at least 194 different species of sundew, making them part of the largest genre of carnivorous plants. Prey is attracted to the sweet secretions of their pendicular glands, and then become trapped by the stickiness of their hairs. Even Charles Darwin was fascinated by sundews, and cultivated some of his own in order to better observe them. He noticed that those that were fed insects were much more vigorous, produced more flowers, and created more seeds when compared to plants who relied on soil for their nutrients. He noted that even the tiny leg of a gnat coming in contact with a tentacle of a sundew was enough to induce a thigmonisty response in the plant. Thigmonisty is a reaction that plants and fungi have to touch or vibration. Giant Malaysian Pitcher Plants While we may find the idea of chowing down on some mice or insects rather stomach turning, the preferred food of the giant Malaysian pitcher plant will make you wish you had a nice tasty bug to munch on. Sure, these plants are large enough that they've been known to feed on mice, lizards, frogs, and small birds, but those aren't its favorite treat. It seems that this plant is particularly interested in shrews, and indeed have evolved in order to better attract the tiny rodents. You see, shrews mark their territory in the same way that many other creatures do, by using it as their own personal toilet. Instead of hoping that the shrew will fall inside and be consumed, this plant is designed to catch the droppings of the shrew as they attempt to mark their territory. The shrews eat nectar that the plant produces near the rim, and then when it has to use the bathroom, why, there's a convenient pitcher plant right there. If that doesn't sound healthy, well, it is to these plants. Scientists conducted a stable isotope analysis of the leaves in order to track the sources of its nitrogen. They found that these plants get anywhere from 57 to 100% of their nitrogen from shrew droppings. Butterworts Much like sundews, pinguecula, better known as butterworts, use their sticky glandular leaves in order to lure their prey in and then trap them. There are 80 known species, most of which are found in South and Central America, although they can also be located in Europe, North America, and Northern Asia. These plants tend to vary in appearance depending on where they make their home. Butterworts found in a tropical environment form compact rosettes composed of fleshy leaves and they maintain their carnivorous leaves year-round. Whereas plants found in a more temperate climate form tight buds that are made with scale-like leaves during the winter period when they are dormant. During the winter time, their roots and carnivorous leaves wither and return when the weather improves. These plants have a pendicular gland that secretes a sticky substance, which forms visible droplets on the surface of the plant. This lures in prey who are searching for water, who then land on the plant. 
their footsteps trigger the glands to release additional fluids, and the more the creature struggles, the more sticky fluid is released, until the prey is thoroughly encased. Bladder warts. If you thought carnivorous plants were only found on dry land, think again. The Utricularia, more commonly known as bladderwort, is a species of plant that grows in both freshwater and extremely moist soil. Although the aquatic bladderwort lacks roots, they have flowers which are held out above the water. These contain traps used to capture their prey, which includes water fleas, young fish, mosquito larvae, and even tadpoles. Terrestrial species feed on tiny creatures like protozoa that make their way through the moist soil. Their traps are rather sophisticated when compared to other carnivorous plants and include the use of vacuum-driven bladders. When the prey brushes against trigger hairs, it activates a sort of trap door, causing the prey to be sucked into their bladder. Think of it like accidentally stepping on a hidden panel and then falling through a trap. This process takes only 10 to 15 thousandths of a second, so it's over before you know it. Terrestrial species generally have very small traps, whereas the traps of aquatic species are much larger. Once inside the bladder, the prey is dissolved by digestive secretions, which only takes a couple of hours. Cobra Lily Also known as the California pitcher plant, or the cobra plant, these cobra lilies are notoriously difficult to cultivate. They get their name from the unique shape of their leaves, which resemble a cobra about to strike if you view them from the correct angle. It grows in bogs and moist areas, because unlike most other pitcher plants, it doesn't collect rainwater and instead just uses its roots to get enough moisture. Not only can it thrive in nitrogen-deficient soil, but it can even live in ultramafic soils, which are incredibly rocky and have a low silica content. The cells inside the pitcher are designed to absorb nutrients from prey, and are identical to the ones on their roots that absorb nutrients from the soil. Like other pitcher plants, they use slippery secretions and a unique shape to lure their prey into their traps. Once a creature ends up inside, it will get confused by the many false exits inside the plant. This causes the prey to become exhausted, and thus easier to consume. While we know many things about the cobra lily, we are still unsure about the method of pollination they use. In fact, its pollination has never been observed in action. Parrot Pitcher Plant The parrot pitcher plant is named after an animal, but unlike the cobra lily, we don't exactly see their resemblance. These plants are native to North America and are also known by their scientific name, Saracenia cystucina. If you're looking for one in the wild, be sure to check boggy, low-lying forest areas. When their leaves mature, they form a balloon-like hood allowing it to trap its prey. To an insect, this reddish-purple segment offering drops of nectar looks incredibly enticing. Unfortunately for the bug looking for a meal, the parrot pitcher plant is going to be the one eating. Like the cobra lily, the parrot pitcher utilizes false exits in order to confuse its prey. An insect might see light appearing to shine through a section of the plant and try to crawl towards it. However, the downward-facing hair is lining the interior of the plant will soon force it downward into the pitcher when it tries. Soon, the insect will be submerged in digestive enzymes and the plant will begin to feed. Bat Nap When the Nupensis hamsliana was first discovered, scientists were quite shocked to see bats using them as a great place to catch some shut-eye. These plants grow in the peat forest of Borneo and are a common roost for woolly bats. But why are these fearsome, carnivorous, predatory plants letting bats hang out in them? Well, the two creatures have a symbiotic relationship, because in addition to eating insects, these plants also enjoy snacking on bat guano. Yes, there is more than one plant out there that loves being used as a toilet and has evolved to be a living one. Scientists tracked local bats and found that they use these plants to sleep in during the day exclusively. The bats get a comfy place to catch some shut-eye, and the plants get about one-third of their required nutrients from the bats. How do the plants entice the bats? Well, we know that bats use their echolocation to see when they're flying. It turns out that the leafy structure of this plant seems really attractive when the bat's signals bounce off of it. In studies, bats much prefer plants within large leaf structures. Fanged Pitcher Plant It turns out that pitcher plant may have some competition when it comes to what plant the bats wants to make their nest in. Nepenthes bicalcarata, or the fanged pitcher plant, also makes it a good place for bats to nest. Although this pitcher plant does get its fair share of winged visitors, it's much better at taking in insects and doesn't rely quite so much on the deposits the bats make. These plants lack the waxy interior pitcher zone, alkaline pitcher fluid, and some of the digestive enzymes that pitcher plants typically have. Some scientists believe that the fangs of this plant serve to deter animals such as lorises and monkeys from drinking the contents of the pitchers. 
Others believe that the spines help lure insects into a precarious position, which could easily lead to a meal for the plant should the insect lose its footing. Carpenter ants make their home in the plant's tendrils, but also frequently fall prey to the plant. In fact, these ants account for about 75% of the plant's nitrogen. The ants also help the plant by cleaning off fungus and other contaminants. This helps keep the plant in prime feeding condition. Venus flytrap. Okay, so you had to know we would include this one on our list. The Venus flytrap is perhaps the most well-known of all carnivorous plants, and they look like little miniature versions of Audrey II from the classic musical Little Shop of Horrors. Inside the mouth of this plant are tiny hairs that react when an insect lands on them. When contact is made, the plant will snap shut, trapping the insect inside. However, recently scientists discovered that it takes a certain amount of contact to trigger this reaction. Repeated movements trigger the cycle of disintegration and spell doom for the insects. But it turns out that a single touch has no effect on the plant. Two steps will cause the trap to close, three prime the trap for digestion, and by the time the insect contacts the hairs a fifth time, the digestive enzymes start to flow. Further struggling at this point just increases the number of enzymes and speeds up the digestion process. So if you ever find yourself in the jaws of a Venus flytrap, just hold very, very still because it is capable of clamping shot in a tenth of a second. Have you ever been lucky enough to see one of these fascinating plants in its natural habitat? If you have, share your story with us in the comment section. Thanks for stopping by the hub, and don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel for more awesome content. We'll see you next time.